Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving. Plus, high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Available on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and at Hero.co. That's H-E-R-O dot C-O. Delicious, ultra-low net carb Hero Bread buns and tortillas. Soft and fluffy, high in fiber, and with zero grams of sugar. Up to 10 grams of protein, coming in at under 100 calories. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co. H-E-R-O dot C-O. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10. H-E-R-O dot C-O. This is Make It Plain. M.I.P. With Massimella Mark Thompson. Make It Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's time for our weekly segment that we always enjoy. We get to talk politics and everything, our favorite topic. He is the founder of dailycoach.com and civics with a q marcos Melitzas joins us now thursday coach y'all hey man how are you doing great how are you doing i'm good i'm good i'm good another interesting week let me let's start this way with this impeachment going on do you so you, you had six republicans vote that the trial was constitutional um With all the evidence that Democrats, and I know this is a long shot, with all the evidence they're putting forward, do you think, I mean, if if, if this were a jury and they were instructed to just vote on the issue at hand, did he incite, one, which is beyond a reasonable doubt, and two, um, if the sole punishment were to be he is barred from holding federal public office again, do you think there's any way? We could get what do we need? Seven more. Uh, ten. Ten, ten. No, ten, sorry, it's fifty sixty-seven. You would need yes, ten. Sixty-seven. Is there any way we can get some more? Because I mean, I still don't get what what they're thinking. It would be in their best interest to bar him from federal public office again. And it's, I mean, he'd have. They're worried about being primary, but I mean, this would be so far removed. They they'd have they'd have to they'd have they'd have to wait a year to even try to find people to primary some of these folks. Yeah, and I would never really put a lot of stock in Donald Trump's carry through, right? I mean, he's got the attention span of (laughs) of a fruit fly. So, um, and his carry through has always been terrible. So I I don't know how valuable a threat that would be in a lot of places. Uh, It would definitely be in the GOP's interest to convict and not just because of, you know, the fact that he actually incited an insurrection and violated his oath to office. Like, um, but the reality of the Republican Party is that they lost because of Donald Trump. They lost the White House, only the third president to lose reelection in the last hundred years, Donald Trump. So he lost the White House. They lost Congress. They lost the Senate. Right. So he's cost them dearly already. Now you look at who he uh, who he galvanized young people, people of color, people who traditionally don't vote turned out in dramatic numbers. And that's why we won states like Arizona and Georgia and made up ground in Texas. So Republicans are really going to double down on this dying white old male rural vote and and count on that to carry them to national prominence. So uh, clearly they are on the wrong side of, of demographic trends and just the very uh, psyche of America. And yet that's what they're sticking with. It doesn't understand. I don't understand that. It makes no sense. So can they flip it? Well, we just had uh, most all but six Republicans say that, it wasn't even a constitutional trial. So it's hard for me to see how you then vote to convict after you said it's not constitutional in the first place, right? I mean, it, it, it would be in Congress. 
not that it would stop Republicans are more than happy to be uh, hypocritical and, and illogical when it suits them. So to me, that the question is, uh, always it's going to come down to Mitch McConnell. Now, he's still signaling that maybe he might vote to convict, right? And if it was up to just, you know, his own personal, you know, instincts or whatever, uh, I don't think he votes to convict. Um, I think he hates Donald Trump with a passion. But I think he also hates Democrats even more than he hates Donald Trump. So <laughs> I think uh, those my my that doesn't bode well. But here's the problem is that that corporate PACs, corporate donors, CEOs, they're afraid to vote for uh, they're afraid to donate money to Republicans right now because of potential blowback in being seen as aiding and abetting abetting insurrectionist. So there is a big question, I think, in McConnell's mind. Are these corporate PACs just putting on a big show right now when everybody's paying attention? And then they come back quietly five, six months down the road like nothing happened. Or are they really going to lose these corporate PACs? And Microsoft already said that for the next two years, they're not going to, might even in four years, they're not going to donate any money to any Republican who was part of the insurrection. So McConnell, I think that's the that's the piece. And if McConnell then decides that he's going to vote to convict, can he bring another ten Republicans with him? Pro possibly. Again, it's 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 hard to see it happening, but it is within the realm of possibility. I wouldn't put money on it. <laughs> nobody should vote. Nobody should ever bet on Republicans doing the right thing. But. If they fear that this money issue is going to bite them, then then uh, I think they might have to act. And and Republicans don't have an act blue. They don't have a way to funnel small dollar donations to their campaigns. Uh, their supporters aren't the kind of people, apparently, to funnel small dollar contributions. So this is a, a fundamental flaw and problem. I mean, Democrats dramatically outraised and outspent Demo uh, Republicans in 2020. That's probably not going to change anytime soon. So if you cut off that corporate spigot to Republican candidates, it'll mean that they'll fall even further behind. And I don't know if they think they can they can um, afford that. But now he voted with the 44 other Republicans to say that the trial was unconstitutional because yep. he's no longer in office. Mitch McConnell was the one who blocked the trial yep. while he was in office. Yep. So, I mean, I'm not holding it my breath to think he's going to do anything. If he's saying it's unconstitutional now, what's he going to do? Flip again and say, well, I'm going to vote to convict. But but I think what you alluded to is important. If, in fact, um, uh, corporations are going to say they're going to withhold their money. See, I think that's the bottom line. Those that's corporations it. would have to say, hey, you want some money? You vote to convict. I mean, one plus one equals two. That's real simple. Now, I don't know if any of them are going to have the courage to do that. Um, but I, I, I think that it's just as simple and that message needs to be gotten to him, uh, uh, this week so that he'll know. I mean, that's really what it is because to your point, can Donald Trump follow through? He's been deplatformed. So what platform other than Fox news and he goes in and out of love with them is, is going to mobilize primary candidates. And then this Fox News want to go so far out there that it is completely uh, the opposite of the Republican Party establishment. I, I don't know that they're ready to do that just yet, because then if we talk about corporations, corporations buy ads on Fox News, even though not many, not many of them are left. Most of yeah. them pulled out. OK, so at, at what point do they, you know, uh, cut their losses as well? Why would they help Donald Trump and nobody can even see him? He's not. Has Donald Trump been on Fox News since he left office? Nope. What's that? No, about? He, he still blames Fox News for costing them the election for for destroying that narrative by calling Arizona. Right. Right. So so I think that, you know, I, I just don't see what they get out of maintaining this for something. This what is it? Um, is is the, the the deep web? Is that what it's called? Uh, uh, the the dark web. The dark web is O A N N. No, no. American no. Case? And, and it's there's dark web. It's underground and secret, which does not lend itself to popular electoral math. Yeah, yeah. Just a thousand cranks who are plotting the overthrow of our government. I mean, 
<laughs> you're not going to build a, a Republican majority based on, on that. Um, so, yeah, so for sure. You know, one of, the, one of the things I think they're worried about is, uh, is this idea of the Patriot Party, right? And I can't think of a dumber thing to be worried about than, than Trump actually running something effectively. Remember, this is a guy that bankrupted a casino, a business that literally prints money. So if he can't run a casino, how is he going to run a political party? I mean, we know it would degenerate into a grift from day one. What's he going to have, Steve Bannon run it or Jared Kushner? I mean, these people couldn't run anything. So this idea that he would be successful in running a party, a, a patriot party, is, uh, is laughable. We know that it would be a, a Donald Trump grift. We know it would fall apart under criminal investigation in a matter of you know, a year or two. So I actually would almost encourage, if I, if I was a Republican worried about the long-term future of the Republican Party, I would actually encourage all the crazies to, to, to leave and to go to this Patriot Party and then to cleanse them. And then you can go back to the suburbs and say, yeah, we're not the crazy party. Those guys over there, that's a Donald Trump crazy party. We're the people that are going to give you lower taxes. And if they were smart, they might even dump the, the abortion stuff. And they could just really turn it into we're not going to tax you party. And that would be an actually dangerous party um, electorally over time. The problem is that it would, it would, it would mean that the Republicans would be out in the wilderness for, for several cycles as they, as they retooled, which is, um, you know, it's what happened after Barry Goldwater lost, you know, it took a while before uh, Republicans took control of Congress. I mean, Barry Goldwater was what? And, uh, 72, 68, um, Ronald Reagan didn't win till 1980, and Republicans, Newt Gingrich, didn't take Congress till 1992. Yeah, 92. So um, it means you're going to be in the wilderness for a while, but then you, you have a much more solid foundation upon which to build majorities. What they have right now is going literally in the opposite direction, and they are doubling down on that uh, instead. And And Mark, I, I, if it, if I was just a partisan Democrat, I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, all right, you know, keep going down this path. Um, but the problem is that this is not a Republican Party that believes in democracy. And we're one low turnout election away from having maybe a smarter version of Donald Trump uh, in office. And we were lucky that we had somebody who announced his dastardly plans to the public, like, I'm going to undermine the Postal Service so Democrats can't vote by mail. And then we think, okay, then we're not going to use the postal service. <laughs> we'll put we'll in person early and use drop boxes, and and it undermined his effort to undermine elect, you know, the election to disenfranchise people. Uh, next time we may not be so lucky, and we're one low turnout election away from that happening, and that's what's scary. If it was a question of okay, Republicans are the party of lower taxes and they want to you know eliminate a woman's right to choose, yeah, we're going to fight that tooth and nail. But at least you don't feel like the very fabric of American democracy is at risk. So uh, Daily Coast is reporting that Mitch McConnell may leave the door open, but he is just a walking contradiction to vote that it's unconstitutional and then to suggest um, that he is going to leave it open. And this is the source for this is uh, Jim Scudo, Scudo. Um, told Jamie Gangell that Mitch McConnell is openly sing signaling that he is leaving the door open. You know, weird. Well, then why would you vote that it's unconstitutional? So, I mean, know. McConnell doesn't care about being consistent ever or right. hypocritical. So, I mean, why, why would he start now? Um, maybe he's doing this. That's what he thinks he needs to do to, uh, to get those corporate PACs back into the fold, just to show how he's reasonable by listening to the evidence. I, I don't think that would be enough, but maybe right. he thinks right. it is. There's also an argument being, being made, Marcos, that this case and its evidence is even more direct and more clear cut than the first impeachment, um, where we're talking, the first one we're talking about Ukraine and all of that, and that was clear. But then you're talking about the attack on the Capitol and, and then the very moving testimony. I'm sorry, uh, argument, not testimony of Jamie Raskin uh, regarding his family and his little girl 
and that I mean that some are arguing on social media that that is is should even more so touch the hearts and minds of the American people because this was a direct attack on the Capitol that he encouraged that Trump encouraged uh, and because there was physical violence involved. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the case on the on the first impeachment trial was it was solid. I mean, there there was just nothing weak about it. But it was something that happened in the Ukraine, and it, it didn't really directly affect people um, emotionally. It was sort of an intellectual violation of the oath of office. This was much deeper. This was insurrection, and right. and for sure, to me at this point. The impeachment trial is less about trying to get a conviction and more about setting the historical record about what happened and giving the American people a coherent narrative and timeline and just a visual history of how Donald Trump ignited this insurrection. And and whether Republicans convict or not, uh, that is less important at this point. I mean, I would love to see it. It would, it would, it would mean so much, just even for our democracy. Again, I don't really have a lot of faith in Republicans doing the right thing. But this is laying out the the Democratic House managers are doing such a great job of sort of telling the stories, creating this narrative about what happened to the point that Trump's defense is like, oh yeah, they did a great job, and we also think that violence is bad and Trump denounced it, you know, in the strongest terms, we know he didn't, you know, they're doing the same lying crap, but they know that the democratic case is, is, is strong and it's being communicated to the American people in a very, very clear way. And I think that has incredible value. And we're already seeing in, in recent Gallup just had a poll where Republican self-identification is down dramatically. I mean, it was down from like 30% to 22 or 24%. So this is going, this is, at least in the short term, this is costing Republicans support. And again, I think the only way they can start to rebuild that trust with the, with the, you know, normal thinking American people, not conspiracy Q people, is to vote to convict and just to start rebuilding a party that surrendered itself to conspiracy theorists. Some of the polls say there's a narrow majority in favor of conviction. Has civics done anything with this yet? No, we're not. You know, civics does a better job of of the long term trends, tracking long term trends. Like, what do people feel about uh, uh, Black Lives Matter? So we're not we're not pulling impeachment specifically. What we are seeing though is we're, we are seeing that that um, erosion in in uh, approval rating for the Republican Party, um, which just presumably are impacted. All of this has an impact on that because I don't know why else. I, I mean, I guess it could be Republicans standing in the way of, of checks. So, I mean, that could also be a part of it. But this does not help Republicans with the people. Not, not obviously. There's core Democratic constituencies that aren't going anywhere. That's that's young people, uh, Black voters, Latino voters, Asian voters. They're not going anywhere. Those are going to be strong Democratic constituencies. Where Republicans are in deep, deep trouble are with those suburban college educated white voters that are suddenly kind of the swingy voters. And everything we're seeing in this in this trial right now is got to scare the crap out of those college educated suburban white women. And maybe some of even the white men there might actually start thinking twice. So this is a very powerful branding exercise in the dangers of the modern Republican Party. and. Republicans, for the most part, don't seem to realize that or they're just so trapped by their Q base that that they can't do anything about it. The unfavorable rating, and I'm looking at seven for the Q right now, the unfavorable rating for the Republican Party has gone up 10 percent since Election Day. It was according to civics with the Q folks, it was 56 percent unfavorable on Election Day. It went up to 64 percent uh, unfavorable on January 6th. And uh, as of uh, uh, February 9th, it is 66 percent unfavorable. So it, it's steadily, steadily going up. And I don't know how they get through this impeachment trial without that unfavorable, unfavorable rating going up even more, Marcos. Yeah, it's a, it's a one-two punch, right? It's impeachment, which is just 
really um i mean the the i've been watching cnn and msnbc and, and the coverage is just brutal to republicans absolutely devastating to them uh for right reasons right they're, they're pretending that treason and insurrection somehow aren't something that they should be worried about um but then there's also the issue of the of the uh of the um the checks the um you know, the, the COVID payments, the, the stimulus. And the one that I'm most excited about is the annual tax credit for children, right? 3,600 bucks, uh, for children under the age of six, I believe. And then 3,000 for children, uh, over the age of six. I don't know why, cause <laughs> teenagers are just as expensive as babies as I know very much right now. Uh, but aren't they more expensive? You know, <laughs> probably babies have with smaller clothes. <laughs> and eat a little less. I'm just saying. Okay, right. Right. they don't eat like big, big, grown right. 17-year-old teenagers. Who, by the way, so I don't know. Well, you, you look, you, you a little younger than me, not that much. I was raised in my grandmother's house, Marcos. Okay, dinner was at a, was at the same time every night with the family around the table. And after dinner, the kitchen. My grandma used to say, "The kitchen is closed." This generation that has come along, there's no such thing. So it's more expensive to feed kids. You, in other words, you could not go in my. We had dinner at six. You couldn't go back and forth in my grandma's refrigerator at seven thirty, eight thirty, nine o'clock, ten o'clock at night. When you were hungry. <laughs> the kitchen was closed. You just, and that's why folks didn't, didn't get real fat. Either. It was, it, it was an economy to it. You didn't yeah. just go in the refrigerator. Nowadays, hey, you stock up. It's snowing here in New York. We stock up for the whole snowstorm, and everything's eaten on the first day of the snow. So I'm sorry, I don't <laughs> over, but yeah, that shoot. If you get all that dollars, nah. it need to be about ten thousand dollars test. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but the beauty of it is, it's right now the legislation is being written for one year, but the intent uh, that Democrats have is to make this an annual, ongoing tax credit, um, and it would be paid monthly. So people would be getting that monthly check, and you know what? And Democrats should take a lesson from Donald Trump and actually have Joe Biden's name really big on that check. Uh, because what was good for them is good for us. But um, then 2022 becomes a question of Republicans want to take your, your monthly child check away. And I'm telling you, if you even if you're like Q person up in northern Georgia, uh, out in, in Q land, uh, if you have to give up your $300 per kid, $300 per kid monthly check in order to vote for the Republican, even the Q person might have to think twice about that. So not only is it great policy, we're talking about pulling um, the, the uh, sort of the studies say it would pull at least half of American children out of poverty that are in poverty would pull half of them out in one year. Just do the, doing that, it would be a stunning policy achievement, but also the smartest political <laughs> achievement possible is send people a monthly check and then dare Republicans to run against that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Dare them to run against it in the midst of this that's going on now. I mean, it would be it would be really devastating. You've also pointed out some of these um, uh, um, moderate Democrats, and of course, there's a picture of Joe Manchin associated with that article. Uh, what what are they What are they up to? So it, it's, I mean, by all indications, Joe Manchin seems to be backing down. Kirsten Cinema really never. Um, spoke up very strongly, you know, against it. And, and this is, I think, where Joe Biden's experience with uh, with uh, the Senate really has come in handy in the relationships he has there, right? He's not, he's not going to sit there and publicly attack senators. He's not making it about himself. Uh, we had, you know, I have, I have a new uh, podcast. Uh, yeah. I guess I should briefly plug it. It's called The Brief. You can find oh. it on Apple uh, Podcasts and, and Spotify. But we spoke to a historian yesterday and we had a great conversation about how uh, Joe Biden really, personality-wise, has de-emphasized the personality of the presidency, right? Donald Trump was all about himself, and Obama was about a transformative historic presidency, right? Joe Biden has almost disappeared. Like, you see more of his cabinet people out front. But in this question, you had Joe Manchin who said, you know, I want a lower income threshold, I want to complicate things, I want less benefits. And without any real outward public pressure, uh, suddenly he's like, all right, 75, I might be open to 75, right? Once he says I might be open to 75, he's going to vote for $75,000 as the income threshold. And ta-da, 
So he is doing what he's doing very quietly, very deftly behind the scenes. You know, you have competent people making the right arguments. And Joe Manchin doesn't, I mean, he said this explicitly, so I don't have to guess. He's very explicitly said that he's not going to be the reason that Joe Biden fails. So if Joe Biden says this is important, then I think Joe Manchin in the end is going to do it. And I actually, I even get the sense that he may not even be running for re-election at this point because he's, it several times, he has sounded suspiciously close to being a Democrat. And um, West Virginia is not a place that is hospitable to Democrats anymore. It's one of the most Republican states. Uh, Donald Trump won it by like 40 points. So I don't think, I, I think even Joe Manchin realizes his time in the Senate is, is borrowed time. So why not do the right thing? And uh, so I think, I think he's going to be okay for, for this. The big test is going to be with HR1, right? The, the democracy bill with, with voting reform and statehood for DC and all sorts of really critically important um, sort of bits of legislation, because what's going to happen is that there's just, you can't pass that via reconciliation. It's going to be subject to the filibuster and Manchin, Joe Manchin, who has been very firmly opposed to eliminating the filibuster, is going to have to uh, um, really decide whether he's going to tank the rest of the Biden agenda in order to save the filibuster. And that'll be the big test. And I'm not about to predict what's going to happen there. But if that filibuster falls, then it's going to be it may be very well a transformative presidency uh, the next four years, which I don't know if any of us expected that from Joe Biden. Right, right. When is Joe Biden's term up? I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Joe Manchin's term up. Uh, he's got another four years. He was reelected two years ago yeah. or in 18. Okay, okay. Um, and, and I mean, we've not heard much more talk about the filibuster in the moment. But, but where is that? I mean, is that still something that they could pull the trigger on and get rid of? So all you need is a majority vote. To, to get rid of it, right? So it, it comes down to three or four Senate institutionalists. I know Diane Feinstein has said she's the one to see it gone. Uh, 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 Delaware Senator um, Coons, I think, has said he's the one to see it gone. But I, I, I'm less worried about those guys than I am about Manchin. I think Joe Biden says, let's get rid of it because otherwise everything's dead in the water. Um, I think there's a lot of pressure. And the only Democrat that has been very vocally supportive of the filibuster lately, lately, is uh, Joe Manchin. And he's been very emphatic that he will that he will never, I don't know if he said the word never, but he, he would absolutely not vote to eliminate the filibuster. Now, you know what the irony is, is, is Mark, and this is sort of parallels Republicans' refusal to do the right thing for them by convicting Trump is that if you get rid of the filibuster, Joe Manchin would become the most powerful senator in the entire country because everything would have to go through him. Mm. He, would be the, he would be the 50th vote uh, that Democrats would need to get, you know, then Harris comes in with the tiebreaker, right? But um, he would basically single-handedly be able to block everything, which means that he can single-handedly hold every piece of legislation ransom for some goodies for West Virginia. Like, he could really fleece... <laughs> <laughs> the country in order to get stuff to pass. And, and we would be totally okay with it. We would be, uh, congratulations, uh, Virginia, for being a Republican state and electing a Democrat that now can deliver stuff for you. So I'm actually totally, totally okay with that. I don't know why he wouldn't vote to eliminate the filibuster to have that kind of power, because right now he's not a deciding vote of anything, but he could be if that filibuster is gone. Well, you know, he, he ought he to think about that. You know? Yeah. And the reason you're not hearing a lot about the filibuster right now is because we don't need to. Right. The covid relief can go through reconciliation. So they, from the day one, they're like, we're not even going to fight that that uh, the filibuster battle now. But that battle is coming. Folks, he's got his own podcast now, The Brief. And it's available on Apple Podcasts. And there's a YouTube companion to the podcast you can actually see on his youtube channel on daily, the daily coast youtube channel be sure to check it out marcos melissas thursday coast thank you buddy thank you so very much always a pleasure to be here have a great week and everybody please still wear your masks
Yeah, CDC, I think, said something earlier today that people may need, because of the variants, people may need to start wearing two. Because of what? Because of the variants. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and this is this is dangerous because now it's not just a question of you getting sick if you transmit the virus, but now we're actually allowing the virus more opportunities to mutate, which may actually negate the uh, efficacy of the coming vaccines. So we may actually, by letting your guard down and, and spreading the disease, you may actually be destroying our ability to use current vaccines to stop it. So this is existential for us to continue to maintain our uh, our guard up and do everything possible to mitigate trans uh, any kind of transmission. How's how's vaccine distribution going in California? Oh, it's a disaster. Really? We're not we're not getting any. I think we've gotten 300,000 doses of the vaccine in a you know in a state that has what 36 million people. Why why is that? Cuz probably Donald Trump <laughs> You're, we're still you know the biden people are still sort of yeah uh taking out. over they didn't even have a tra- you know they didn't I, I can't blame them too much because they didn't even have a a uh a transfer you know period um transition period so they had to come in on day one of the presidency which was late late january and that was only oh my god it's only like 20 days ago yeah yeah wait what did that might am, am i looking at that right the Biden presidency is, is three weeks long. So yeah, I, we, <laughs> time is warped, but, uh, it means that they're still trying to build stuff because they didn't have a transition period to actually hit the ground running. So, uh, hopefully that's supposed to change in the next coming weeks. We'll see. But right now it's, it's, I mean, I don't even think we've had enough for just basic healthcare workers, much less anybody else. Let me just share these numbers, which. I shared on another broadcast on which I was a guest, but I'll share with you since we're talking about it. Um, African-Americans make up 26.4% of deaths to COVID and have of the 18 million vaccine recipients, only five vaccine recipients, only 5.4% have been black. All right. The Latinx population, uh, 18% of the population, but uh, 38.8% of deaths. And we know why they, that it, that is a lot of frontline workers, hospitality industry, the places where people catch yeah. this thing. Agriculture. Agriculture. So, um, they've only, of the 18 million vaccine recipients, only 11 and a half percent have been Latinx. Uh, of the vaccine, 18 million vaccine recipients, 6.4% are white, including a greater percentage of whites in New York, where I live, have received it. A percentage greater than the number of whites who actually live in New York. Yes. So somehow, even people who don't live here, who are white, are getting it. So I mean, if 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 you need to sign up and you need to spend all day refreshing, uh, you know, a six different sites to see if one of them will give you access to it. Uh, if you're a frontline worker and you, you you're doing retail or agriculture, how are you going to get those? Uh, how are you going to get those uh, appointments? So you right. have you have these these centers that are setting up in inner cities and in places that are frequented, you know, that are predominantly black or Latino, and then you got whites from the suburbs coming in and taking those slots. So yeah. it's the the uh, yeah the the equity component to how this is being distributed is actually quite um, it's it's an atrocity. And you have places like in Texas where the state government is basically saying to cities, you cannot exclude people who come in from out of town to because they know that that trying to limit uh, distribution to a neighborhood, which would create sort of that equity component, would sort of mitigate that. If only people that live in a Latino neighborhood get to have that vaccine, that it would it would impact white people, and they don't want to see that because right. the system is the system, and it's designed to perpetuate that that those institutional advantages. We know this. It's right, right. just it it sucks to see it. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks, keep on fighting. Get in line, sign up, do what you have to do, remain vigilant, get it. Uh, so much for the notion that it's meant to harm some of us. If it's meant to harm some of us, they will be giving it to more of us. <laughs> so. You know, it, it, it's it's being kept for others and not for us. So be sure to get it, especially if you've got comorbidities or elderly family. Oh, I have. cannot wait to get the vaccine. Really? Okay. Oh my God! I mean, I would, I would, uh, 
I would swim in it if I could. <laughs> you know, give me a swimming pool of vaccine. I'll be in there. Well, I, I confess as an African-American, I, I always have some <laughs> apprehension. But when you when you put it on the scale, the we know the odds of dying from COVID. So far, to our knowledge, no one has died from the vaccine. Um, so, hey, you know, I, we, we got to do it. We got to do and, it. You know what? If nothing else, we have a head start in watching all those white people take it and they're not dying. So right. if, not, if, not if, if nothing else, <laughs> we, it's you can take a look and see, OK, it looks it looks OK. Like it, it's it's yeah. safe and, and we need it. We need to protect our communities. No question about it. And yeah. build, up, that build up that that herd immunity. The real meaning of it, not what Donald Trump thought it was. The, the herd immunity he was talking about was not real. No. It was yeah. something crazy. Uh, but this is the real deal. OK, folks. Uh, <laughs> be sure to check out the brief and Thursday Ghost is still be with you every week so so Marcos is on two podcasts uh, but never forget the first one that he was on <laughs> the maiden voyage the OG the OG Thursday Coast <laughs> <laughs> thank All you right. have All a right. great one alright thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain please remember to listen like subscribe and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been May Plain. Not all bread is created equal. And if you like your soft, fluffy, moist, and delicious, then Hero Bread and Buns should be your first choice. But Hero Bread isn't just about taste and texture. It's high in fiber with ultra-low net carbs with zero grams of sugar. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O, for 10% off your first purchase.